Right, let's head into it. Come on, come on, come on. Some probability. Okay, so for our probability, what are we going to kick off with in this video is just going through some of that kind of terminology and notation. So we'll just go through each of these you know, so that it can be explained a bit more than just reading um, the words on the page. So terminology, trial, an action, obs obs an action observation, this is great, uh, which can result in one or many outcomes. So our trial might be, you know, we're flipping a coin and seeing heads and tails and that we're picking a card from a deck of cards. We're, you know, picking a number from um, numbers 1 to 10 or 10 to 20 and we're going to see something about it or we're going to look at, you know, pupils playing certain sports, tennis and swimming and, you know, it's hockey and seeing that. Okay, so outcome, one of, sorry, the outcome, one of the results of a trial. So maybe one of the results is that you play hockey or that you play um, soccer or that you swim or that it's a head or that if we're doing the coin twice, it was heads and heads or something. So now an event is a specific outcome. So it almost feels like these two are very similar and they are. So an event is one of those specifics. So we might go an event is an even number um, as opposed to an outcome, which would be one of those particular numbers or you know, heads and heads, or getting at least one head, or something like that. Um, our sample space, now in our sample spot, now we need to look at all the possible outcomes for a certain scenario. So if we're picking, you know, if we're flipping the coin, you know, just once, it could be heads or tails, that would be our sample space. So it'd be, there would be our sample space. But if we're flipping it twice, then we'd have to look at, maybe we got heads, heads, or we got heads, tails, or we could have got tails, heads, or we could have got tails, tails. So there's our sample space, every, everything there. Our theoretical probability, now that would be based on, you know, logical reasoning and probability law. So if we're tossing our coin once, well, the probability of getting heads is half, and the probability of getting tails is a half. Um, you know, one head and two possible outcomes. So that would be our theoretical probability, but our experimental or empirical would be based on the results of a whole lot of trials. So maybe we sit there flipping a coin and flipping a coin and flipping a coin and we keep on, you know, measuring, oh, we've got a die and, you know, we've got our little die and, and we go, okay, well, the probability of getting an even number is three out of six, right? But maybe we actually just roll the die, roll the die, roll the die and actually keep counting. Exhaustive events, two or more events whose probabilities add up to one. So clearly here an example would be heads or tails. Those two are exhaustive because together one of them must happen. So our probability is one. Now it doesn't have to be, we'll get to complementary shortly. It just means that, you know, the probability of those events happening is one. So something, one of those must happen, whatever all your options are. Uh, mutually exclusive events. Now, you often think about this in an Euler diagram where you've got kind of A and B and we think of, oh, there's no overlap over there. So mutually exclusive events would be like heads, tails. You know, one's going to happen or the other. If we've got our set of numbers 1 to 10, then, you know, odd numbers, even numbers, those are mutually exclusive. It's one or the other. You know, you can't have an odd and an even. Whereas maybe something like if you had prime numbers and even numbers, well, something like two would be in both. So you would draw your diagram here and you'd have two, that number two would be in the middle or there would be one possible outcome in the middle there. That would be prime and even if you were to draw it in a Venn diagram here. Independent events, well, one doesn't influence the other. So let's say that we're tossing our coin twice. Well, if you toss a head the first time, then the next time it makes no difference what happened the first time. So the second time you toss it doesn't go, oh, geez, I, uh, it was a head last time, so maybe this time I should even things out and have more chance of having a tail. No, but maybe something that isn't independent would be the temperature and drinking a hot or cold drink. So you might know, go, well, probability of it being hot is 60%. But if it's hot, the probability of having a cold drink is 80%. But if it's 
call the probability of having a hot drink is a whole lot more or less. I don't know. I drink hot drinks all the time. So that might be an example. And finally, complementary events are events that are mutually exclusive, exclusive and exhaustive. And they must make up the entire sample space. So an example, and again, maybe we can draw it with an Euler diagram here where we've got heads and tails. You know, those are our two options. It's heads or tails, and there's no other option. So there's nothing sitting outside there. Um, if we had the numbers 1 to 10, you know, odds and evens would be good because it has to be odd or it has to be even. There's no other option. Um, whereas if you had primes and even numbers, they wouldn't be so good because there's some, you know, odd numbers that aren't prime numbers like 9. So those wouldn't be complementary events. Okay, into our notation. So notation, just how we're writing these. So let's have a scenario in mind and maybe let's draw ourselves a nice Venn diagram with a nice overlap here. And we've got A, B happening. So union means that it's A or B. So it means that we're looking for A and let's do this, I think will help us a bit. So we're gonna say call. We're looking for the probability of A happening or the probability of B happening. So notice that overlap in the middle, and we'll get to a formula that helps us think about that. So that's that. Now intersection, well, that's where they intersect. So it could be the probability that that bit in the middle, that both of them are happening, that you play hockey and tennis, you know, that would be an intersection. Whereas if you said, you know, people who play hockey or tennis, you'd look at all of those things. Okay. N number of ways things can happen. I think we know how that one works. You know, uh, probability of A occurring. Well, what's the probability? I think we're going like a half for having heads or a half for tails. And this last but the probability of an event not happening. So the only thing here is to go, well, the probability of something happening is 100%. One. So the probability of A not happening is the same as the probability of one, sorry, of one minus the probability of A happening. So just think of that as one minus. Okay, going into calculating probability. If we're calculating this formula, always feels like overkill of why is there a whole formula here? But for our heads and tails, there's one head out of two possible outcomes. If we had numbers 1 to 10 and we looked at what's the probability of picking out a prime number, well, then we go, well, there are 10 numbers over here, not 1. So we got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 4 out of 10, which would simplify to 2 out of 5 or 0, 0,4. Right, and that probability is always going to range between 0, never going to happen, all the way up to 1, it's definitely going to happen. Okay, our formula here. So for our formula, again, kind of thinking of a Venn diagram, if we've got two events, A and B, and we want to see, okay, so in general, the probability of A or B happening. So we had this earlier where we, uh, come on, where we highlighted our thing. So we said, well, the probability of A or B happening, so it means that it must be in one of those circles or both, is the probability of A, great stuff, that's that, plus the probability of B, cool, that's that. But wait a second, it looks like we've double counted that bit in the middle. So we've double counted the intersection, so we need to subtract that intersection there because we've double counted it to get our probability of A or B. Let's do it like that. Okay, so... Two things to bear in mind here are that if these are mutually exclusive, it means that that bit in the middle, there's nothing there. There's no probability of that happening. So therefore, this bit over here is zero, right? Because that bit in the middle, the probability of happening is zero. So we'd normally just draw a an Euler diagram and you'd draw it like this, right? A, B, and you'd be like, there's no overlap. There's no probability of both of them happening. Or you'd do it this way and have 
zero percent or zero in the middle here okay so that's that and then the second part that we use here but it kind of mostly comes up in our contingency tables is if a and b are independent then we just have a look what's the probability of a and b happening so this middle bit here and we just see is it the same as the probability of a times the probability of b so you just work this one out see what number you get work out the right hand side see what number you get if they're equal then it's independent and that's kind of how we're going to work those okay so three kind of ways we're going to draw or visualize these things and there's an example that uses one of these along the way so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be exhaustive in my explanation here um but there's some of the probabilities so let's think a tree diagram so let's go for our heads and tails you know you could get heads and tails and if we threw the coin again so this would be the first coin toss we could get heads or tails or heads and tails the second time so we kind of think about our diagram by going along here so we could throw a head and then a head so that would be and because we could throw heads and heads but if we looked at something like or it means we're looking at different parts we could throw heads and heads or we could throw tails then heads so you see they're two different ways so with our or we're going to go heads and heads that's the end or we could throw tails and heads so they're two different parts so remember as you're going along the path you're going to multiply and then when you choose different paths you're going to add now just a kind of a hint is let's say we wanted to look at the probability of not throwing two tails in other words we want to say heads heads or heads tails or tails heads it would be a lot easier if we just considered what's the probability of doing tails tails and then go one minus that because we know this idea that all probabilities they must add up to one and one last thing to look at with our tree diagram is that at any juncture here the branches must always add up to one so let's i'm going to change this from heads tails because it's a bit boring that it's going to be always a half and a half but let's say what's the probability of it being sunny tomorrow or raining let's give ourselves a little bit more here okay i'm on or so sunny or raining and what's the probability of having a hot drink or a cold drink hot drink well oopsie come on a hot drink or a cold drink so if we're told for instance that this probability is 0 comma 8 we know that this must be 0 comma 2 because that's always going to add up to 1 if this probability is 0 comma 3 this one must be 0 comma 7 so that adds up to 1 and this one down here 0 comma 6 and 0 comma 4 those two must add up to 1 okay it's onwards upwards to venn diagrams so venn diagrams let's take an example we're talking about sport so let's say that we had three different sports on the go and so we've got maybe hockey tennis and soccer let's go for so we might show all of these overlaps and we've got our sample space so sometimes when we're filling in given the information we've got we might be told that people who only play hockey there's 70 people people who play hockey and tennis but not soccer are 14 so we write a 14 in there and people who play you know all three sports there are seven people and somewhere along the way when we're working this all out we're not told a bit of information so we might put an x in the diagram so you know the number of people that play tennis all together or whatever they are so we end up with some sort of i don't want to use 70 again 30 minus x and i'm not going to go through all the details because there's an example but we're going to do something like this so we, we can create an equation now one thing to remember always is that let's say our sample space here is 400 people doing these three sports that there may be 
people that don't do any of the sports. So everything in the diagram should up, add up to 400. But remember that you might have people outside here. There might be 60 people out here that don't play any of these three sports. And we don't know anything about that. They might not do any sport. They might do 100 other sports, but they don't do one of these three. So just remember, everything must add up to 400. Okay, finally, the last bit. Two-way contingency tables. So two-way contingency tables are where we've got two events. So you've got... Let's do it like this, and I'll expand the table shortly. So, uh, one, two, no, it needs to be like that for now. So, you've got something like, now often these things go for binary events where things are split only into two, and then we're going to gender binary norms as well. So, often there's some sort of thing of males and females, and maybe they show something or react to a drug or whatever it is. So they might be option A or option B. So that's our contingency table. And we just, the reason I drew it like that is after all of that thing, we have some sort of total column for everything here where this bit on the bottom right is obviously our grand total. So maybe there are 200 people altogether and they're all accounted for in our table. So if you add, you know, total males and females, you get 200. If you add total that had A and B, you get 200. Now, we'll get to this in the example that we do. But if we want to see if, thing, if these events are independent, then we just pick one of these, and it doesn't matter which one, always just feels simplest to go for the top left. So we see what's the probability of, you know, being male and A, well, it will be that number over 200. And then separately to that, we see, okay, what's the probability of this happening here? So that out of 200 times the probability of this thing over here happening. And if you multiply them together and you get the same number, great stuff, independent. If you multiply them together and they're not the same number, dependent. But we'll do an example where we see that. Okay, that was a whole lot of stuff, right? And yeah, that was. Let's head back into it.